Welcome to Tide TV This Week, brought to you by Renaissance Bank. I'm Christopher England, alongside Maggie Hetzel. Maggie, Alabama came off a big win at home over Auburn, and the Tide looked to keep that momentum going this past weekend. Alabama wrapped up a two-game home stand on Saturday as the Tide hosted the Missouri Tigers. And Alex Reese, he was the spark for the Tide early on. Reese scored nine of the Crimson Tide's first 13 points, including two three-pointers to give Alabama a 13 to 11 lead with 12.55 to go in the opening half. Then it was John Petty who stepped up, leading 19 to 15. Petty knocked down back-to-back -back three pointers to give the Tide a 10 point lead with 8.47 to go. And then Alabama closed out the half with four three-pointers. But Missouri shot an incredible 21 of 21 from the free throw line to keep it close as the Tigers cut the Tide's lead to seven at the half, 47 to 40. Missouri cut the Tide's lead to just five in the opening moments of the second half, but before the 18-minute mark, Alabama had already extended their lead back to 12. The Tigers kept clawing their way back into the game, down by five, a Mark Smith jumper brought the Tigers to within one possession at 63 to 60 with 11.39 to play. Alabama extended their lead back to as many as eight, but Mizzou cut it back to three once again at 71-68 with 7.34 left to play. From there, John Petty outscored Missouri himself as he finished with nine of Alabama's final 17 points. A three-pointer with just over four minutes left in the game brought the Coleman Coliseum crowd to their feet as Alabama rolled to the 14-point win, 88-74. John Petty finished with a game-high 20 points with six rebounds. Alex Reese had a big first half of the tie as he scored 15 of his 17 in the first 20 minutes of the game. Jaden Shackelford also had 17 for the tie, while Herbert Jones earned his second consecutive double-double as he finished with 11 points and a game-high 12 rebounds. Kyle Lewis Jr. was the fifth member of the Crimson Tide to score in double figures as he finished with 10 points and a game-high seven assists. On Wednesday, Coach Oates and the Tide, they traveled to Nashville to take on the Vanderbilt Commodores. Alabama made three of its first four attempts from beyond the arc, including back-to-back -back threes from John Petty himself to jump out to an early 11-4 lead. The Commodores cut the Tide's lead to just four, but Petty, he drilled three, his fourth three-pointer in as many attempts to put Alabama up by nine. At 24-15 with 9.32 to go in the opening half, Petty finished with the first half with 17 points on five from seven from beyond the arc as the Tide held a 37-30 one lead at the half. Alex Reese started the second off with a huge dunk, but Vandy battled back, cutting Alabama's lead to just four at 39-35. But the tide turned in a big way. In a span of just over three and a half minutes, Alabama went on a 14-0 run that turned a four-point lead into an 18-point advantage at 53-35 with just over 13 minutes to play. The Crimson Tide controlled the game from then on, leading by as many as 21 as the tide rolled in Nashville 77-62. John Petty had another huge performance from the Crimson T for the Crimson Tide as he finished with 23 points and 10 rebounds for his fourth double-double of the season. With that, Petty became the 51st player in Alabama history to surpass the 1,000 career point mark. Kyra Lewis Jr. added 16 to go along with seven rebounds and five assists. Jaden Shockford added 15 and seven boards, with Herb Jones chipping in 10. The win puts Alabama in a four-way tie for third in the SEC at four and two with an 11-7 overall record. And you don't want to miss this. We're going to show you an exclusive behind-the-scenes footage of Alabama basketball team from their big wins over Auburn and Missouri. That's coming up next right here on Tide TV This Week. Tide TV This Week is brought to you by ATI. Built by Bama. Rebuilt by ATI Physical Therapy. Ford and the F-150. Tough runs in our family. See your local Ford dealer today. AFS, a Bayless company. Your foundation and waterproofing specialists. Serving you since 2000. Nate Oates, first season. He has changed the complexion of this program rather quickly. Oh, baby, what a jumper. What a play! Oh, mercy! What authority! My goodness! Bama fans here at Coleman are on their feet.
Welcome back. It's been an exciting last few days for the Alabama men's basketball team here at home in Coleman Coliseum. A sold-out crowd that witnessed the Tide dominate fourth-ranked and undefeated Auburn. Now, not undefeated. They followed that up with a big win over Missouri this past Saturday. Let's go behind the scenes for those wins in Episode 3 of Max Effort. It's brought to you by ATI. But I, I told Nate after the game, no one. I said, do we play you again? He says, no. I said, thank goodness. <laughs> There is no one that wants to play Alabama right now. They're taking 30-some threes. They're making shots from four different positions. Look, we're, we're done. If we have to play them again, it'll be in the tournament, and I will dread that if we have to. This is a sign of things to come, not only in this rivalry, but in this league at the SEC, one of the top basketball leagues in America. This is a big game tonight. Make sure we're the ones playing the hardest in the first four minutes. Got it? Now there's only two undefeated left in the SEC. One is tonight, and Auburn better bring their A game because this building's on fire. John Petty for three. We could tell when he walked out, Tom. He was engaged with the students. Here we go, off and running. Whoa! Herbert Jones with the tomahawk. The steal for Kyra Lewis to the right for the flight. Yeah, defense lead, offense right there for Alabama. Kyra's two with the basketball. Off of the screen, goes left side. Stops, breaks an ankle. Down the lane, left-handed layup is good. Transition opportunity for the top. Nice feed by Petty, and they'll count it for Jay Shackelford. Gives the crowd one more chance to go nuts. 83, 64, your final. Let's listen. That, that's how we got to play. Now, that, that to me is what's got to get us going on a streak here. All right, so we had a really tough four, first four games at two and two. We, we can go on a run. All right, we just proved, I mean, shoot, they're fourth in the country. We just beat them by 20, okay? So now we got to go on a road and get wins after, you know, we got to take care of Missouri and we got, and we just got to get on a run. We, t and we talked about it. We, we can do big things here. All right, so uh, we're playing so much better right now than we were a month and a half ago. It was big time. So. Congrats to everybody. I, I'm not going to go through all stats. You, you all, everybody that got in that game, everybody that practiced with us, everybody that was on the bench, everybody contributed to it. So enjoy it. Okay, this got us to two and two. We need to be three and two on Saturday. Everybody with me? I got together, you got me win. We win! Who would make the best football player on the team? Me. Showtime! Herb Jones! Just watch number one. There's Herb. Causing problems again. Off to Shackelford and count it. You know, when times get tough, like we're on the road and the team going to run, I just look around <clears throat> and remember who's there. It's the effort, y'all. We got to go minutes. get this one. We got to go get this win. Go get this win. Hey, have fun. Have fun. Go fight on three. Fight on three. One, two, three. Fight. Right. You know, I got to play for the people that's on the road with me. And I know my family's watching, so I'm always playing for them. But to see, like, the people that I struggle with, like, during the summer and through training camp, that just reminds me to play for them. And give them all. Alabama's got to be ready for the tip, though, because the warning shot that the Mizzou can throw can be lethal. A good team. Hey, let's get this thing started. Hey, let's get this thing Go away. Nico had his dunk attempt blocked. Oh. Mercy ripped it down to Shaq. Quarter three. In and out. Oh. And back. <laughs> Let's it fly. Yep. A huge play by John Petty. To Lewis. Back to Forbes. Square. Shoots. He hits a three. And that's big. Tough shot by Watson. Offensive foul. This is a terrific job. Herbert Jones. He might be onto something here in Tuscaloosa. Oh, they're on to something already. This is an offensive machine. Shoot 31 out of 31 on the line. We still won by 14. We had to be doing a lot of a lot of, a lot of good things. 
I got together, you got we went together. We win. Tide TV this week is brought to you by ATI, built by Bama, rebuilt by ATI Physical Therapy, the University of Alabama, where legends are made. They're fighting, they're working their tail off every day. Three-pointer on the way. Bottom! What a road win for Alabama. At the buzzer, counted if it goes, it's gone! Top of the key, a three. Got it! Welcome back after a big win on the road over the Auburn Tigers. The Alabama women's basketball team had a week off before they returned to action. Krista Curry squad returned to the court this past Monday night as the Tide traveled to Knoxville to take on the 23rd ranked Tennessee Lady Vols. And it was a very low scoring first half as Tennessee led by as many as nine as the Lady Vols held a 24 to 17 advantage at the end of the second period. Alabama, they did fight back in the third period as Daisha Benjamin three pointer with 317 to go in the third tied the game at 33. The Crimson Tide trailed by just four heading into the final 10 minutes of play 41 to 34. The Lady Vols extended their lead to nine with 727 to go in the game and that's when the tide started to come back. Megan Abrams tied the game at 56 with a shot from beyond the arc with just over two minutes to go and it was back and forth from then on. Alabama took the lead on another three-pointer. This one from Jordan Lewis with 124 to go put Alabama up 59 to 58. But Tennessee up one with 15 seconds to go. Sarah Johnson converted a couple of shots from the foul line to give Alabama the one-point lead at 63-62. Tennessee with the ball. Alabama up one with time winding down. Renaya Davis dribbled to her right, steps back, and just throws up a rainbow shot, and somehow it falls just before the buzzer sounds. Unbelievable. That shot put the Lady Vols up two with eight-tenths of a second left. Jasmine Walker's heave from well beyond the art wouldn't fall as the Tide loses a heartbreaker in the final second of the game, 65 to 63. Despite outscoring Tennessee 46 to 41 in the second half, the Lady Vols pull out the win at home. Jordan Lewis led Alabama in scoring with 17. That total pushes her over the 1,000th point total for her career. Jasmine Walker added 14 points and 10 rebounds for her 10th career double-double. On Friday night, the Alabama gymnastics team held their home opener as the ninth-ranked Crimson Tide hosted the number one-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. And Friday night was also Capes and Crowns night as young Tide fans got to interact with some of their favorite superheroes and princesses before the meet. Alabama got things started with a 49-2-5 on vault. Nearly two-tenths of a point better than last week's season opening vault score led by a 9-9 from junior Lexi Graber. Gorgeous vault. Freshman Macari Dog gets 995 on uneven bars, led the tide to a 49-425 team total. A week after counting a fall on the balance beam, Alabama bounced back with a 49.400 pace by freshman Luisa Blanco's 9925 and a 99 from Doggett. The Crimson Tide closed the meet with a 49.325 on the floor exercise, led by a 9925 from Doggett and a 9.9 .9 from senior Maddie Desch. That would all add up to the highest total team score in a home opener in program history with a 197.400, but it just wouldn't be enough as the Sooners showed are they the top team in the country or they 198.250? That Oklahoma total is the nation's top score of the season so far. Could the Alabama men's and women's tennis team start the season off perfect? We'll have all the details coming up next. Trust each other, love each other, let's do this for one another. She's meant so much to this program. And I am so proud of this team and where we're headed. What a moment for the Crimson Tide when they needed it the most. A double-double was nuts. We are built by champions. So much airtime. We are built by band. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week, brought to you by Renaissance Bank. The Alabama men's tennis team began the 2020 dual match season this past weekend with doubleheaders on Saturday and Monday. 
Alabama took on UAB in Chattanooga on Saturday in their first doubleheader. The Tide cruised to victories in both matches. Alabama won all six of its single matches on the way to defeating UAB 6-1, and Alabama defeated Chattanooga by that same 6-1 score. That 2-0 start was a great way to begin Joel's match season for the Tide. George Husak's squad kept going on Monday as the Tide earned another doubleheader sweep with a 6-1 win over Sanford and a 7-0 victory over North Alabama. Let's take a look at the Tide's wins over Sanford and North Alabama with head coach George Husak and Alexei Nesterov. Both Sanford and UNA presented us with our opportunities to, to go ahead and uh, execute our game plan. So uh, with Sanford, I think it sets us up because we kind of gone through the match and uh, we expressed our needs for improvement with certain guys and I think they responded well this evening. I think we played really well and maybe we didn't play the best teams in the country but we respect every opponent we play and the best way to, to show the respect to teams is to beat them as easily as possible and that's what we did today. So today as well as all weekend they're a challenge physically and I think mentally. I think that uh, you know, we continue to work on our ability to execute, and I think uh, we have to challenge ourselves to face the adversities that come along with our matches. Whether we're not feeling great, whether we have some soreness, whether we're playing someone out of conference, in conference, ranked, unranked, we have to be able to execute and uh, be able to face that. And uh, if it's not going our way, be able to respond. And uh, we still got to get better at doing that. The two doubleheader sweeps improved Alabama's record to 4-0 on the season. The Alabama women's tennis team began their 2020 dual match season at home this past weekend as well with a couple of wins. Alabama swept both Kennesaw State and Alabama A&M 7-0. Let's hear more on the Tides wins with head coach Jenny Mines and senior Ann Sealham. I thought overall it was really good. Everyone went out there and played really well. We got two Ws, so I'm happy. I thought we started off the, the morning a little bit nervous. Um, I, I thought that we would. I think that's a little bit to be expected in the first match. But um, all in all, I think we had a really good day. I feel like uh, the first match we were a little bit nervous. Uh, second match we went out there a little bit more loose and we played a little bit more aggressively. So I feel like going uh, Going into next week, we're going to go playing more aggressive and we're going to have definitely a lot more confidence going into the next match. Back to back, Jax! Bama! Oh, what a catch by Alyssa Brown! Are you kidding me? And this one is a shot of the center! Swung on and crushed to left field, and it's another grand slam for Alabama! Alabama, the Right champions for the regular season. And Alabama wins it. Those were our BBVA Top Plays of the Week. Now let's take a look at our Players of the Week, brought to you by Payless Drugs. And it's a no-brainer to go with a national champion, right? We'd like to congratulate the University of Alabama cheerleading team. 
The Tide won its second Division 1A All-Girl National Championship in school history this past Sunday evening at ESPN's Wild World Sports in Orlando, Florida. The Tide also placed second in the co-ed category. This is Alabama's second national championship since the team began competing in 2014. Their other national title was in the second year of competition in 2015. Now let's take a look at next week's schedule for the Crimson Tide, and it's a busy one. What's next is brought to you by Renaissance Bank. Men's basketball begins the week on Wednesday as the Tide travels to Baton Rouge to take on the LSU Tigers. Tip-off is set for 6 p.m. on either ESPN or ESPNU, and on Thursday, women's basketball, they return to action in Coleman Coliseum as the Tide hosts the 20th-ranked Arkansas Razorbacks at 7 p.m. If you can't be there, you can follow the action on SEC Network+. Plus. We have four teams in competition on Friday, but they are all on the road. Track and field will be in Bloomington, Indiana for the Indiana University Relays. Men's tennis travels to Minneapolis to take on Drake, while the women's tennis team will have a little nicer weather as they will be in sunny San Diego to take on San Diego State. And gymnastics has the nightcap as they will be in Baton Rouge to take on LSU at 7.30. We turn the page on the calendar on Saturday to February. On the first track and field will still be in Indiana. Women's tennis takes on California State University, Northridge at one. And finally, a home game. Men's basketball will be here in Tuscaloosa on Saturday as the Tide hosts the Arkansas Razorbacks. Men's tennis will still be in Minneapolis on Sunday as Alabama will take on Minnesota and women's basketball will be on the road as well. The Tide will be in Oxford to take on the Ole Miss Lady Rebels at 2 on SEC Network+. Plus. Thanks again for joining us for another edition of Tide TV This Week. See you next week, everybody. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.